In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The resurrection causes holy haste and hurry. St. Mary Magdalene runs back from the empty tomb to tell the apostles. And then Peter and John run for themselves to see what is going on. Two disciples who encounter Jesus in Emmaus, they, they rise up that same hour and they hurry back to Jerusalem during the night so they can tell the rest of the apostles that they have seen the risen Lord. A few days later, Peter immediately jumps out of the boat into the sea and he hurries to the shore where he sees our Lord standing there to greet him. If you take the time this week of the Easter octave to read the proper gospel each day, and I highly recommend that you do that, then you will notice how the disciples race and they run to share their spiritual joy as soon as they learn of the risen Christ's victory over death. Their swiftness is a spiritual alacrity, a holy haste and enthusiasm for the risen Lord. They run to see him for themselves. They run to make him known to others. The swiftness reminds us of the holy haste mentioned in the beginning of the Gospels. The haste of Mary to make the journey to visit her cousin St. Elizabeth. The haste of the shepherds on Christmas morning as they rush to see the infant king in the manger. The spiritual swiftness found at the beginning and at the end of the Gospels contains an image which was dear to St. Paul. My friends, think back to February 17th, Septuagesima Sunday, when we began the season of pre-Lent. On that day, St. Paul was telling us that just as an athlete runs the race with energy and enthusiasm for the prize, so should we also have a holy haste in our spiritual life with an even greater energy and enthusiasm because the eternal crown of heavenly glory far exceeds any earthly prize. Dear friends, Lent is indeed finished, but the race of life is not yet won. At Easter, we cannot simply give up our prayers and stop trying until next year's Lent. That is not an option. Let's take a lesson from the fable of the tortoise and the hare. This Easter season, let's not be like the hare curling up for a nap under a tree. Because, indeed, we are still far from the finish line of life. So no spiritual snoozing. Easter is not the time for a spring break from our spiritual exercises. But the Easter haste of the disciples is indeed a remedy for our spiritual somnolence. The creature comforts we enjoy in our modern world tend to make us sluggish to prayer and lethargic in our devotions. We might indeed respond to God's inspirations, but normally we do not do so immediately or at least not with the swiftness that God deserves and expects. And this lethargy is not neutral. If we do not run toward our Lord, then we we will be overrun by sin. So it is that most of our culture's sins are those of listlessness and sloth, sins of boredom with divine things, the refusal to stir ourselves to action, for God. And this spiritual somnolence over time becomes eventually a refusal of God's action within us. Ultimately, we hasten toward the things we love. And if we race after all the transitory and ephemeral things, such as entertainment, physical pleasure, money, promotion, popularity, our own ease and comfort, etc., then we find ourselves not running towards something, but just running in circles. 
The ability to, to run the race and to persevere in it. It's not our doing. It comes from the grace which Jesus merited for us on the cross and the grace bestowed at the resurrection on this Easter day. As St. Thomas Aquinas observes, the gift of divine love adds to natural love of God a certain quickness and joy. It's not an impulsive, upsetting spirit of hurry and haste, which is of the world. No, but rather it's a holy haste for doing the will of God. And this means giving priority to the things of God and our daily life. Just as the disciples rush to see the risen Lord for themselves and to make Him known to others, so also must we give the time to make our priority prayer and spiritual reading. Try it and you will see. Make haste to give God the best moments of your day in prayer. And then, I promise you, if you are consistent in doing that, you will see that you will thus accomplish more in less time and with greater results. Certainly, this holy haste requires generous sacrifices. Sometimes it means leaving aside that superfluous activity. Sometimes it means paying closer attention to how we actually live our day. And sometimes holy haste means resisting the petty demands of our perfectionist attitude, which wants to spend lots of time on things of lesser importance. But God will surely reward sacrifices made for Him. That's the first key to this holy haste. Give priority, give time, and the best time of your day to the holy things of God. And then finally, for we practical people, St. Francis de Sales gives us great down-to-earth advice. And he quotes the Latin proverb, which says, Festina lente, make haste slowly. This Latin motto of Augustus Caesar, it built the Roman Empire. This motto was printed on many coins of the time. Make haste slowly. That sounds rather contradictory, doesn't it? How then can we make haste slowly in the world of the 21st century? Again, St. Francis de Sales tells us, accept the duties which come upon you quietly and try to fulfill them methodically, one after another. If you attempt to do everything at once or with confusion, you will only exhaust yourselves with your own efforts. And by doing so, you will confuse your mind such that you will probably be overwhelmed and accomplish nothing. End of quote. To make haste slowly, St. Francis de Sales tells us to give primary importance to morning prayer. Prayerfully reflect on the necessities, the goals, the reasonable expectations of the coming day before you. And don't forget to allow some room for those unexpected events. Prayerfully resign yourself to the crosses of the day and offer them up in advance to God already from the morning. And people who are faithful to this morning prayer, even if it is short, they will receive the inspiration and the grace from God to make haste slowly all throughout the day. Dear friends, we hasten toward the things we love. So let us pray then that the Easter grace of the risen Christ will perfect His love within us. And it will arouse us from our spiritual laziness and make us run in the ways of perfection. Haste makes waste. But not if you make haste slowly, according to the method of St. Francis de Sales. So like the disciples, let us make haste, holy haste, giving priority to prayer, especially in the morning, priority to good actions for our neighbor. And then we shall receive the reward of those disciples 
who make Easter haste. Like them, we shall rejoice at the beatific vision of our risen Lord, and we will embrace His glorified body, putting each one of our fingers into His glorified wounds, and that eternal happiness of our heavenly home. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't forget to click subscribe, and click the bell to be notified of future videos.